Hello everyone, my name is Kara Davison and this is Find Your Shine. And today I'm really excited because I have Charlotte Zavak here, who is somebody that I absolutely adore. Charlotte is uh, an internationally renowned transformative intuitive and healer. She is an oracle, a mentor, she's an alchemist, and she has full sensory perception which means she's a legit psychic. <laughs> um, <laughs> and she has x-ray vision, which I'm really excited to talk about. Um, she, travels, oh. <laughs> she travels through Canada, through the US, um, as a keynote speaker with uh, different psychic expos, media uh, forums, and can also be found in the GTA, Greater Toronto Area, on some different radio shows as well. Uh, and not to mention she works one-on-one -on -one with clients. So I had the pleasure of meeting Charlotte through a mutual friend and uh, my first experience was a, it was an online meditative meditation uh, transmission and I have to honestly say it was like my hair was blown back. <laughs> it was like knock my socks <laughs> off. Um, I mean, I meditate all the time. I've done tons of guided meditations, but this was completely next level. And um, there was definitely some teleporting and bilocating for me. Um, needless to say, it was like a beautiful experience. So, uh, and then since then, we've, you know, attempted to collaborate on a couple of projects. And um, overall, I'm just like super grateful that you're here. And the reason why I'm so attracted to you for Find Your Shine is because when I see everything that you do, um, what I admire is that you are fully willing to step into who you are and just be that, you know, like um, it's not easy. And this is, I'm speaking for myself now. Um, you know, if you have gifts and if you're an oracle and if you're a medium and a psychic, you know, it can sometimes be hard to step into that role and actually like center it and be in your community. So what I love about you, Charlotte, is that you own it, you rock it, you travel around. I'm scared shitless. <laughs> you would anyway, and that's what I love about it. So that's why I'm so, that's why I admire you so much because it's like, there's a woman who actually like, like walks her talk, you know? And so, yeah. So thank you. I'm... <laughs> I'm so honored. I've been really practicing on learning how to receive because it's been one of my, let's just say challenging lessons <laughs> for years. Yeah. And um, it's, um, and I, I am so grateful to thank you so much to, to be able for you to express that and for me to receive it because that's a really big thing for me. I, I for years I had a, um, uh, a journal or like where people would sign what they thought of the readings or the sessions that they had with me. And it wasn't until I, I can't even tell you how many years I never looked at it wow. because I, oh, I was just so afraid or so I just, I didn't know how to receive. And it was uh, when you're in such a, a, a space where you're always give, 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 you really forget about that. And I got really sick a few years ago because of it and it was a major wake-up call that you can't be always giving and so it really means a lot to me to hear those words and to to feel and to see how you've grown since that first meeting <laughs> and how profound your your life has become as well too and it, it really truly is not just an honor, but it, it's just, it's beautiful just to see the awakening and see the, the connection. It's so, it's really beautiful. And I'm really, truly, I don't think there's any words that can express it because I think it goes beyond honor. So it's, I'm just happy to be here. So thank you. <laughs> and I find it really interesting now that Saturn has moved into Aquarius. I have to say, thank God, because I am ruled by Saturn and I've had Pluto running around since 2007 <laughs> and it's insane <laughs> and I had a lot of hard times with the computer yeah. and so I um 
I liked, I guess for a long time, because of all the past lives of being, you know, as many of us, burnt at the stake, throat, throat slit, whatever, I didn't want to be seen. I was so scared to be seen. And uh, so radio was really good for me for a very long time because I didn't have to be seen. And of course, Facebook Live started happening. People wanted to start to see, and I was like, oh my God, I was hyperventilating so many times. And, uh, but it was amazing how you just calm down and you just do it. And for me, it was always like it had to be in a structured sense. Yeah. And now I've finally been able to break out of it. So yeah. it's amazing. I can't wait to see what's going to happen now as we go through all these changes. So it's really incredible. Yeah. I mean, there'll be some growing pains, but good things, right? At the end of it all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. So you have, in my mind, a really kick-ass job. <laughs> and, um, I want to know, like, what do you love most about your work? Honestly, I got to say I love it all because it's, it's a passion. It's, uh, it's what I've always wanted to do. And I've been able to do so many things because of it, because it's just reading and it's uh, the, the meditation. Sometimes I just want to be one-on-one -on -one with somebody. And then other times when I'm at like yoga fest or at a festival or something when it's like an entire room full of people and leading a meditation or an opening ceremony or being on the radio where you can be silly and hilarious and funny at the same time and not scare people, but give them the information that they need. You know, you, um, you give them, you, you show them what they want, but you give them what they need. That's really the, the key motto I would say I'll go by. And to being the head healer in a group for another um, uh, group, a mentorship. And I mean, it's all of it. I love it all because it's so multidimensional. And I have, um, I need that. I need that space to also keep me sane as well too. And I love touring. It's uh, just to be in the, in the wild, I guess, right on the front lines. It's amazing. And yeah. then touring and taking retreats. I mean, there's just so many things to it. Our, and when we were doing our, our meditations on the beach and collectively coming together, there's just so much that there's, I love it all. <laughs> and still growing, still evolving, still, I'm always, I'm working with shamans and, and healers and I mean, everything you can think of so that I can come back and deliver more right. and be able to give more, always, always growing, always, it, it just fascinates me. So I'm the eternal student. That's what <laughs> I love too about like the line of work that you're in is that there's, well, you have to be willing, but, and I mean, this happens yeah. with every, with every job, essentially like the willingness to expand and the willingness yeah. to go into that like next version of yourself, you know, yes. which can be scary. Every version demands a new you. Right. And, and sometimes that step can be scary as hell, right? To be like, well, oh, what, yeah. what is that going to be? <laughs> so, um, but it's so important, right? If particularly in the line of work that you do, it's like there's continuously like new information or new teachings unraveling or, or kind of like the veils being lifted. Or planets so, showing up or... <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, like, Viruses giving us some... Uh... <laughs> There's always the evolution. So to be able to grow along with that is like, I think a superpower, mm. right? And I think such a beautiful yeah. lesson for everybody as well to like be able to like go with the flow, you know, like don't be so rigid. Yeah, 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 yeah totally. Going forward, right? So I like that. <laughs> um, okay, so you got to tell me like x-ray vision. What is that? Yeah. <laughs> so I thought I was crazy, honestly. And um, I can see holograms. I can see right through the body. Now, it's not like X-rated vision, okay? So I'm not seeing that kind of stuff. But I can see right down to the organ and tissue, right to the vertebrae of what's off alignment. And what I've seen, too, is I can see the, um, the sacred geometry pop out of the body and reconfigure itself as well, too. Plus, I can see the hologram of the Merkaba around people as well. I, I thought I was nuts. Honestly, I thought I was losing it. I didn't know who to talk to about it. I would see organs pop up on people and all kinds of things that I didn't know how to understand. So what I did was I started to read books on anatomy so that I could figure out what each organ and tissue looked like right. so that I, hey, that's the pancreas, that's the liver, this is the part of the throat. Like it, it was mind blowing. And then I did astrology. And that's when I found out that was probably about 10 or 15 years ago, I had my chart done. And the woman who read it, she was absolutely phenomenal. 
And she told me that I was born on a new moon solar eclipse, which actually represented that I was born with x-ray vision. So when she told me that, I thought I was like, oh my God, I'm not crazy. I can actually say. So that's when it all really came together. And then because I do so much healing work and energy work, and I did it first on the physical body, now I can do it on such a multidimensional level that I don't even have to be in the room with the person. I can be on the other side of the planet. And I can still see all the different things that, um, or organs, or all the contracts, or past, present, future life stuff that just pops up as images. So it's kind of like, a, it's like a holograph, and then it just dissolves. Wow. It's really wild when um, TV finally caught up to the special effects. I was like, yeah, that's exactly what that looks like. The first movie that ever did that for me was Thor. I freaked out when I saw Thor, not because of Thor, well, that too, but <laughs> because the scene where um, Odin was in the chamber where he was, um, I forget what they call it now, where he was sleeping and he was realigning himself was wow. exactly what a chamber of light looks like. And I was like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And then of course, when Dr. Strange came out, I was losing it because there was so much stuff in there that is exactly like how I see it. And I was like, wow. Whoever did that was really on the ball and was clearly picking up stuff. So it's, it's really, it's not lure and Hollywood entertainment. That's the stuff that really exists. And when you're reading books and it's just amazing how things just reveal themselves, right? And, and when you're out in nature, I find really when you're in nature is when you get the most powerful stuff because that is where the true energy is, the earth pulsing, that connection. And that's, and then, of course, when you're also going to sacred sites, I mean, I've led a few to a couple of really profound um, locations across the world, and always something absolutely incredible has happened in every single one. So you can't deny it. It's just there. And so I stopped thinking I was nuts and needed to be in a straitjacket, and I probably had many past lives like that anyway, and um, could finally be in one where that didn't happen. So it was... Um, it was really wild and it still continues to happen. Yeah. And uh, it's just incredible how it happens. Even like the guides that show up when I'm meditating or leading a, a group, when I'm doing a group, usually I find always something really incredible happens afterwards, usually within the day after I've held the space for everybody and a major shift happens. So um, especially when I'm doing the earth meditations and connections with everybody, it's, um, it's, I can't even describe it. It's like there's no words yeah. to say that even acknowledge what is actually happening. It's a feeling. That's probably why the language of light comes up in like squiggles, right? Because you can't say it. Well, it comes yeah. down. It comes through silence. It comes through absolute stillness. Mm -hmm. So when you need to find that, the void, you um, you really trust the process. You stop second guessing yourself and and basically making yourself batshit crazy. So, right. yeah. So, like, how old were you when you first like realized that you had this ability? You know, <laughs> were you really young? I yeah, but I didn't think it was uh, something special. I thought yeah. everybody had it. Yeah. So I probably was four or six. Yeah. yeah. Something like that and. And then it just kept developing and I just never, everything that happened in my life always put me back into this line. So it was like these angels were standing beside me. Nope, you're not doing that. Nope, you're not doing that. Nope, 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 nope. Yes. And it was really, it was a really wild experience trying to figure it out. Because of course I came from a very strict uh, Eastern European um, household. So they thought I was totally losing it. And so it was um, it was really difficult to get past that. And of course, at that time, there was no social media. There was none of the stuff we have now. Mm -hmm. So I was very much isolated and very much within myself. I couldn't speak to anybody because I didn't have the words to say yeah. what I was seeing and what I was feeling. So I honestly didn't know what was wrong with me. And yeah. it took till my 20s, my early 20s to figure it out. So I'm almost 50 now. So it's uh that just tells you how much everything is really shifted and the energy so it's very um it's been an amazing ride i know and it's 
especially, okay, so I can relate to that because when I was really young, I had crazy psychic mm-hmm. phenomena mm-hmm. all the time. And um, I had nobody to talk to about it. I think you and I are really close to the same age. So I mean, like that mm-hmm. was the time when it was like, like, A, you did feel crazy. And if you did say anything, people did think you were crazy. Like, let's be yeah. you know? weirdo. <laughs> so I feel like what happened for me was that like, I just started to like shut it out and shut it out yeah. and, um, and be afraid of it really, because, you know, because I wasn't understanding what it was and there wasn't anybody to say, Oh, this is what's happening, honey. So, you know, like you're okay. Um, so it's, it's what I love now about this time is like you and I can talk right now, if we wanted to go down the rabbit hole of, um, <laughs> you know, the galactic beans and we wanted to do, you know, whatever yeah. angle we wanted to go, we would be safe to do that now. And we would be, we have this forum where we can just talk openly about it. And I'm not, Hallelujah. Gonna, I'm not going to think you're crazy. You're not going to think I'm crazy. And the people who are watching this, I mean, they might think we're crazy, but probably not, you know, like <laughs> they're right there with us. <laughs> so um yeah it's yeah again like that's all part of that like evolution too right and being able just to go with that flow so that's really cool yeah Um, totally when when was there a time like for you in your career Mm -hmm. where something so phenomenal happened that you were like okay hell yes I'm on the right path you know was there I mean like I'm sure there's like thousands of yeah but is there it was always like the next door the next yeah you know like I couldn't fight it like I remember when I started reading tea leaves in a tiny little restaurant in Plains Road in Burlington and the next week the newspaper showed up then the radio showed up oh let's make you the psychic on the show oh let this like it was always like that so I was like okay I must be on the right path because that doesn't happen anywhere else And then I was able to create all these other things. So then I created a fundraiser for cancer, for breast cancer, actually. And um, from there, I started to create other events. And then I was doing meditation nights. I've been doing meditation nights for 20 years. And I used to do it every other week. And then finally, about 2014, 15, I was doing it up until then for every other week switching it new moon and uh, full moon i just couldn't do it anymore i needed a break so i stopped it and now i only do it on eclipses Mm -hmm. i was born on a new moon solar eclipse and when i feel like it when there's a real feel to call to do it because it was just i was changing i was evolving and i was i was giving you know in a different way it was just it was amazing how it was opening up so it was just as you learn, as you grow. So it was always one thing led to another that led to another. And then touring and I love traveling. So I've been able to travel to so many places across the globe. I might not have been able to do if I wasn't doing this. Right. And now I'm on the cross Canada tour. Not right now because it got canceled. But, um, but uh, that has been one of the most unbelievable experiences of my life. Connecting to all these other communities as I go across the country and, and just being able to see this beautiful country. Canada is just takes your breath away. I'm so grateful to be living in this country. And I'm always just, when we drive through it, even the prairies, it, it's just beautiful. And the people are just amazing. And it's, it's everything. I'm starting to like all over the place. Cause I'm like, and so I'm always like gratitude, gratitude for everything. And uh, the online. So having the combination of the two is really incredible. And uh, just to see people. And now I'm finally starting to do also meditations online. And that's been a really interesting experience as well, too, to be able to move it, something sacred, because for years that was driving me nuts, is how do you make this sacred on the computer when it's supposed to be, you know, physical and energetically aligned? But the world changes, evolution. So it's been, <laughs> it's been a big change. It's been a big transformation. I just pulled a card and it says karmic relationship and the voice. So it's, um, it's a karmic relationship of evolution, people. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So- yeah, and I love, um, I love that you started by reading tea leaves. My great grandmother yeah. read tea leaves, and that's one thing. It was like- a bet. Really. 
young when she yeah died. that's how it started and I wish that it like I was too young when she died to to be able to have that like passed on or to her for her to teach right me. right that's one thing I'm always like oh if there's one thing that I could go back and like kind of redo be like having my great grandmother teach me how to do that because I think oh I can teach you <laughs> perfect um that's cool so okay so then because of your psychic abilities and mm -hmm. I mean has there ever been a time that you've been like scared shitless like has there ever been oh, yeah. that you've like is there anything you want to share like something that was like so defining but like that scared the shit out of me you know that made you question your career <laughs> I had a narcissist stalker ah. and that was um that was one of the most difficult times of my life was trying to be as grounded and as balanced while I had that happening and uh but it was such a powerful lesson for me because even though I still once in a while get triggered by it I've gone through a lot of healing through it it made me a better version of myself a better person but I've also been able to help so many people now because of it that it um I really turned it into a positive thing it absolutely transformed my life and it was so difficult because this person really tried to destroy my life and my reputation and everything so it was a very difficult experience to to have to go through something like that and to feel that intense anger and rage from somebody because of whatever their issue was which i to this day still don't understand what it was because i never even met the person so it was just uh um or well, whatever, but anyway, it was it was just a, such a bizarre experience, and to be able to stand in that and to understand it, I get it when I see some of these celebrities and um, some of these people um, who are really famous or are going through or in the media, and they have to experience that. How they stay strong, I I I don't know how to say it because I had to go through it too, and. It was such a, it was a very powerful time, but I was very withdrawn and very, um, I, I really isolated myself because I just didn't know where the attack was coming from. I had an idea and I know in my intuition that it was it's right. Mm -hmm. You know, with narcissists, it's almost impossible to prove because of their gaslighting and their projections. There's and for me, years, I wanted to talk about it but I just couldn't while I was online or doing any lives. It was just like, be as strong as you can and get through it. Right. And it was really difficult. And even when I was on the radio station, I, I would get letters from this crazy person saying all kinds of horrible things. And uh, this is actually the first time I'm talking about it out so openly. So that's a good thing too. That's a big uh, healing for me as well. Yeah. For in the beginning, I thought it was a reflection of me because I would always take ownership and responsibility for whatever the wounds were. But I realized that was a big lesson. I didn't have to take ownership responsibility for that because it wasn't mine. But I still, I learned so much from that experience that it absolutely transformed me. And because of it, I did a lot of healing, counseling, everything that I could. And because of it, I became so much more powerful now I'm speaking about it and I just feel like I just released it because I felt something really just leave off of me. So and, um, I've been able to help so many people. So that is probably one of the things that scared the hell out of me. And the first time I had to do a photo shoot for a newspaper when they were going to put my face in the paper, which had never happened up until that point. I was so freaked out. I wanted to make myself look ugly. I remember hiding my my i'm you know i have a pretty large chest like you know probably almost like dolly parton <laughs> and i would hide it and put my hair back and do everything i could so i would be the least attractive because i wanted to be taken seriously and not look like oh it's just some whatever bimbo who doesn't know what the hell she's talking about so those were the things those were those were some really deep vulnerabilities i had to work through and to come into a space of self-acceptance and to see that that's not what it was about. And so, yeah, I can't believe I just spoke about that stuff. <laughs> that's pretty wild. Thank you for sharing that because it's, it's really, it's really synchronistic actually, because um, <laughs> the, next, the next question was going to be, oh. 
which is beautiful. <laughs> the next question was like a defining moment, like in your life, it was right. dramatic or it felt like an obstacle that, that brought you to where you are today. So you just like, that's, yeah. it, that's it, you know? And then like to, you know, hearing that you say that it made you stronger, it brought you to a di different part of your life. Like, what do you think was that, was the key to navigating that time? Like, what was it, you know? Stepping back mm -hmm. and redefining my boundaries. Mm -hmm. Taking ownership for myself and realizing that that had nothing to do with me. Mm -hmm. That person was just trying to enmesh themselves into my life and get me out of my higher self and try to be the voice in my head. And it didn't work. And no matter how hard she tried to keep coming back, because she came after me for years, wow. um, just didn't work. So, you know, karma's a bitch, man. That's all I got to say. And it's really a wild experience to be brought to your knees like that. Because when they can separate personal and business, I'm fine with, but to go after what I had created and have been so truthful. I was so angry at God because I was like, why are you doing this to me? I've been doing everything I can with the clarity of, of being an honor of helping and serving why is this happening? And then I realized it was because it was a lesson that had to be evolved. So I kept thinking, I was like, man, I must have been a real asshole in a past life uh -huh. to have brought that into this life. But I thought, well, I just need to clear it. So that's what I did. And to this day, I still every now and again get a trigger, but I don't react. I just, I'm able to, you know, and because of that, now we're able to also recognize narcissists like that and know how to deal with them and be able to help others so it's yeah. a very um it was a very profound lesson so i'm actually i'm glad it happened it made me hell of a lot stronger and more um it actually made me more fierce and more powerful so um thank you <laughs> and you know what i love because like yes. beyond the like narcissistic because that's obviously like that's an issue but even mm -hmm. people who are struggling with these types of issues like beyond yeah. a narcissist the issue of um, not feeling safe to honor their power, their boundaries, yes. not knowing their yes, not knowing their no, um, feeling like, um, you know, what people say or feel or think about them is truth, you know, like, so yes. to me, it's such a beautiful lesson in the bigger scheme of things too, of like taking back your personal power, knowing that it doesn't actually fucking matter what anybody thinks, says, does, or whatever against you. Oh right like it's like how we feel about ourselves that matters the relationship with ourselves, and so when these things pop up in our lives it's just a beautiful way for us to i mean even though it's muddy and murky and it can't it can be yeah but to come back to that place where it's like actually no like that's not true and that that's not my truth it can be your truth and that's fine that has nothing to do with me you know i think that's like, yeah yeah that's the power. So, and I you mean, know, it's funny you say that because I found too, like before it happened, I was like, I've already dealt with a lot of this shit about self-acceptance. So why is this coming up again? So clearly it was a much deeper and it unveiled that I didn't know how to receive. And I was having a really hard time to um, allow myself to receive because I was always trying to give. So, and love isn't just about that. It's yeah. about being able to allow yourself. So it was such a profound situation and then when i really realized and you probably heard this too is that with narcissists they actually reflect you so you're yeah. falling in love or you're dealing with yourself mm -hmm. so it's just profound stuff <laughs> and it's all it's all part of the growth it's just incredible yeah and i mean as long as it is absolutely part of the growth 100 percent. and what catalyze or not catalyze but exponentializes that is when you realize it's part of the growth because then it's like oh, yeah it's like giddy up then that's fine let's go with it. <laughs> you know as far as i can rather than because i think at that time it's also easy to fall into a poor me or a victim you know like you said you're yeah, yeah. you're pissed at god no doubt like you know like yeah. you know we're pissed at whoever because it's like why is this happening to me but then if you once you move beyond that why is this happening to me and be like okay I respond. yeah it's game on and I'm, I'm, I'm the game. I'm going to control this or I'm going to allow my higher self to control this process. And yeah. So thank you for sharing that. Oh, it's, thank yeah. you. I, uh, it's been a long time 
coming. <laughs> it feels good to get that stuff off your chest too, right? Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. So that's good. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, okay. Um, I've, here's a, a question that, I mean, I think about this for myself all the time, but I'm wondering what you think is, uh, why do you think you're on this earth at this time? Help with the growth, help with the uh, Great Awakening and to keep the space anchored and activated. I'm an activator, so I'm here to set up and make sure, tweak whatever needs to be tweaked so that we can move on and um, do what needs to be done. And uh, it's, uh, man, being a Divine Mother emissary holding the Rose Codes activation, it's, <laughs> it's crazy. But it's awesome and I absolutely love it. Mm -hmm. And it's, I, I don't think I'd want to do anything else. Yeah. So. Beautiful. Well, you're doing it beautifully. So thank you from my oh, heart and for, for everybody, because this is the thing when people like you, you know, are, are holding it down and anchoring in the light, like, you know, for the most time, like I picture, like, I know that that's what I spend a lot of time doing myself is anchoring light and, you know, right. connecting to the grids of the earth, like doing all the things. And it's like, you know, that's the, yeah. the kind of jobs that happen like on the down low. Nobody knows about that stuff. So it's like, no, it's true. It's like, so what's your job? Well, um, do you really want me to tell you what my job is? <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> you say, well, not much, you know, anchored in some life for the collective. Here's my cosmic toilet brush. <laughs> but those are the things like that kind of job goes. Um, it's not like there is an outpouring of like, um, like accolades, you know what I mean? And it's not that that's what you want, but it's like, it just goes unnoticed, I guess is what I'm trying to say is that like, it's- Yeah, it's true. true. It's that true. It and especially when you start seeing all these, no offense to some of these millennials, but oh my God, some of the stuff I see posted. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I think that's, yeah, I love it. Lightning. Um. Okay, so- um, what would you say that is a secret to your life that helps keep you in balance or in check? I need for myself what? or when I take, I need space to be by myself. Mm -hmm. I really need that time and I don't let anything intervene with it. And, uh, otherwise I lose it because I, I work at such a high level and that, um, I may appear like nothing's going on, but it's exactly, I think there was a meme like that somewhere. It was pretty hilarious. Right. But um, I really, my biggest secret really would be just that I need to be by myself some days. And usually when that happens, I take off. I like going into the woods, mm -hmm. hike, mountains, vortexes, and I just kind of like disappear into the other dimension to recharge. And uh, I do a lot of work with the etheric realms at night. So that I can keep myself also too in that high vibration yeah. and um, eating really good. Yeah. That's really it. And it's, it's no real big secret. It's, <laughs> it's just really honoring, really honoring the self and really, I find what really works for me too is I need some kind of like a schedule so that that keeps me grounded. It helps me to really anchor mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, like a loose type of a schedule so that I have a sense of what's coming up. Yeah. And uh, the first few days of this quarantine was pretty interesting because that was like everything was out the window as everybody was experiencing. Yeah. So it took about three days to realign it. And then I was like, okay, we can deal with this. Yeah. And it is what it is. It's not going to last forever. We're going to get through this. And then we just move on. So like you said, go with the flow. Yeah. But and anchoring for sure yeah and the hikes that anchors yeah and i think that um space and time alone uh is not regarded and like scheduled in for people mm -hmm. you know we spend so much time with other people i mean yes. through our screens through our work through our family and um it's funny I, you know are you familiar with like the five languages of love oh yeah okay yeah. So Absolutely. I saw a really funny meme a couple of weeks ago where it was like the, the sixth language of love has been discovered and it's called space. Yes. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, that's awesome. I know. I laughed where I was like, I mean, it, it's like, of course, like, yes, like that is the key. And I mean, like how we love ourselves, how we love other people, like stepping back, 
having time alone, refilling our batteries with the things that we love and whether that's nature or music or dancing or whatever it is, you know, it's just, yeah. and I feel like there's not enough people in the world who take time to be on their own. And so I, mean, true. I think that, I mean, when you're alone, you're with yourself. So I think that that's probably a pretty big indicator of why a lot of people kind of stay away from that. But yeah, because they're so afraid of being lonely. Yeah. Actually, a really beautiful Osho card that is such an amazing explanation of, of being alone and when you feel the difference between aloneness, mm -hmm. radiance of aloneness to the darkness of loneliness. It, it's phenomenal. Yeah. It really helped me when I was flipping out of my mental mind yeah. a or so ago. <laughs> and yeah. Meant him a lot. Beautiful. I love it. Mm. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm curious because this is something that I've been thinking about for myself and I've been mm -hmm. thinking about like legacy of love and mm -hmm. mostly because I've been studying how to become an ascended master. So, um, you are an ascended master. <laughs> I was like, there was this, like, there was three criteria though. That was like, you know, and legacy of love was one of them of like really? in this lifetime, which meant that like you're leaving something behind when you leave your physical body, that's your legacy of love. Something right. that is like for other people to, um, to still help them grow and expand, right? Like Osho, it's the same kind of thing we're just talking about. Yeah. Do you have any idea what your legacy of love might be? Probably something to do with crystals, but I do everything with love and from my heart. So It'll yeah. be the energy left behind because it's not a physical thing, right? Well, I mean, you're an ascended master. Every single person on this planet is an ascended master. We're just remembering yeah. like light bulbs at different voltages. Yeah. But we all have the five stages and the five gifts of being an ascended master. It's just remembering them and working on your light quota. So you already are. It's <laughs> just claiming it. You just say it. I am. I am. Did master. And did master. <laughs> Though it is. Though it is. <laughs> I think that, like, for me, what I'm thinking is like, okay, is that going to be a book? Is that going to be a song? Is that going to be, um, you know, something that like somebody will find? And maybe for you, it's like, okay, I'm going to program a crystal with all of the information that I've gleaned in this lifetime and leave it like, like the Lemurians or all the crystals. Anyway, you know, like, am I going to leave that for somebody so that they can kind of understand? Probably all of the above. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> My legacy is activating the grids. Yeah, right. To help with that shift. Yeah, yeah. And exactly. just make sure you leave your. Leave I'm your astrologically, I'm a Capricorn, and they always talk about legacy. Yeah, that's funny. Um, I cut you off. No, that's okay. So I just have one more question. Sure. And I'm wondering if you have somebody that's like a spiritual mentor or somebody that you admire within your community, like, like we just spoke about Osho and how like mm -hmm. the, his words really like kind of helped you during a time, but you know, is there anybody else that comes to mind? Mary Magdalene right now, uh, Mary and uh, the whole uh, lineage of the Rose Priestesses and the Sophia um the female christed sisterhood mm -hmm. and most of mine are all etheric and just the wisdom that comes forward from them and the the knowledge and the healing that we are all reawakening to and remembering is really where that's at but i would have to say it's mary magdalene oh, right. i remember the very first time i ever came in contact with her soul i was one of these people that I was always like, I will never bow to anybody as long as I live and all this queen bullshit and blah, blah, blah. And I was doing a Kundalini yoga meditation and her energy came in and it was such an incredible, radiant, so, I, I, it was so irrevocably just absolutely, there was no way to describe the energy of how profound it was. And it brought me to my knees. Yeah. And I remember bowing and thinking, my God, I totally understand this now. And the, the energy, whenever I'm in commune with her and the information that comes through is just so absolutely profound. And I'm so 
grateful to also finally be reconnected with the divine mother and the connection to with Isis and now Anubis and it's it's incredible how they show up because once you hit a certain frequency then they show up and it's okay you're ready to learn this next lesson you're ready to to experience this or um, experience this form of healing or, or be introduced to this new it's not new it's just you remembering this new technique or this new um, energy frequency so it's very it's it's I gotta say that's what it is so it's probably why I have to be alone so much because I'm in commune so much and right. then I try to bring in the energy and then I send it straight to the earth so. and really work through when I'm in the cities when I'm on tour I always have a sheet of paper because I, I like to write my readings I have to blow every, I blow up um, <laughs> everything like I set fire to recording devices and all this kind of stuff so I, I don't record anything I do there's just no point mm -hmm. and so I always write and then underneath my stack of papers that I write on I always have a list of what I pick up from the energy frequency that needs to be cleared for each individual city that we're in and then at the end of the weekend I usually go into the Akashic Records and then I clear it for the city and the people and then also within myself so that I can bring forth the energy to evolve there's another secret <laughs> that's not something i usually divulge <laughs> and um, and to help that city to help raise the vibe of that city and help to shift it and its people so they also awaken it's uh usually pretty telling yeah. so that's such like that is such a beautiful divine service so thank you for doing that i love that <laughs> and um, mm. I also have a mad girl crush on Mary Magdalene, like, <laughs> and, yeah, and Mother Mary too. Um, yeah, uh, and well, the Order of Magdalena, really. But I mean, like, yeah, I mean, I have a dream to really like go to France where the Marys landed and like trace the steps all the way to Avalon. I just am so called to do that. So if you ever yeah. want to do a retreat, I'll come. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's definitely on my bucket list <laughs> yeah, yeah beautiful but there's and, also yeah. spots like that that are around the globe here right so i found those spots in sedona as well right I did uh offering at the the divine mother altar right um yeah we found them i found it in a cave too really? and uh, yeah north on the north shore in hawaii oh, and wow. uh, there was one there and one in Sedona, and there's one here too, and there's one on the Rockies. Beautiful. And, uh, yeah, I'm gonna be doing a meditation actually, probably on 444. Okay. Um, we're gonna connect to the womb of the uh, the womb chakras of the Earth. Okay. And the full Merkaba of the planet with the womb space. I'm just still trying to work it out. So I would love take then to do it. It'll be so profound. Oh yeah. So not just the chakras of the earth, but the womb space of the earth. We also have sun temples around the earth as well. So I've been looking at all three of them to see which is the one that vibes the most. Right. And I keep it's the womb space. It's all about the earth, earth pulsing. So yeah. which makes total sense with it being 2020 and this evolution we're stepping into. And Venus now is in its um final leg of uh its um transition before it starts its next eight year transition yeah sure you're aware of that. Does that happen and, I'll finish up in june june yeah yeah such exciting times okay so for one thing i definitely want to be part of that meditation and i'd love for you to let me know <laughs> that so i can also share that with other people. i'm going to be doing it for free really okay wow well that's yeah really so that needs to be i'd love to, to be yeah. like for that I'd love to help share that message or share that offering oh. so that you can have more people sign up and what else do you have that's like coming up for you work-wise I know that your Canada tour has been postponed yeah so I got a lot of time on my hands <laughs> I've been doing mentorship one-on-one -on -one. okay good yeah um, that's been amazing yeah. and so profound my god 
and I wasn't going to open it until August, but now I have lots of time. So, <laughs> and in Ju June, I plan to uh, release with the eclipse in June related to Venus, yeah. uh, the path of the Rose Priestess. Mm. So well. there's going to be a few things. So that's the stuff I'm working on while I'm at home and uh, being able to give in service. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and then of course the sessions is somebody wishes for a reading or a healing, but uh, obviously social distanced. <laughs> get to work online it's like this is perfect because we can social distance yeah and, you know how yeah you stay know. in my pajamas and you would never know <laughs> pajamas from the waist down though up above is, is right yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't forget to wear your pants i saw that today on facebook somewhere i thought it was hilarious what was it there was one about wearing a mask and gloves but no one said to wear any clothes <laughs> exactly <laughs> um, uh, Oh my God, got to come up with some fun stuff. Yeah, it's true. And which is always the best thing, right? Whenever like there's like turmoil and stuff, it's like, I, I love looking for the humor because it's like, it's so obvious. And so yeah. it's just like, yeah, it's, it's good. It makes me laugh. I posted one yesterday. I was crying. I could not stop laughing. Yeah. And it was people dressed as dinosaurs running through the street. <laughs> <laughs> I love those dinosaur costumes. They're so hysterical. <laughs> Some really good ones out there right now. I think this year is probably the best memes we've ever seen. So there was one today that I shared that it was um one of the um actors from the hangover series and he was like oh, leaned, yeah. leaned back with a sombrero and like a Mexican vest with his feet up. And um it was like this is pretty much how I'm parenting these days. And, <laughs> and then he was saying, like, oh yeah, whatever, anything goes. And it's like and I was like, yeah, that's pretty much my life right now. Just sitting back like, oh, yeah, because I have a teenager. And it's like, oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, no, yeah, do that. Yeah, sleep till noon, whatever. Yeah, do that. <laughs> like, it's like, there's just nothing. Yeah, there's not a lot of structure right now. But anyway, so for people to find out about all these beautiful things you have coming up, is the best place for your website? Because I want to make sure that's tagged. Oh, thank um, you. In this? or Yeah, I, I would say the website or the group or. Yeah. Um, yeah, those probably be the best because I'm trying to get better at you know newsletters and yeah. uh and um all the stuff we post but yeah um, Facebook I guess really would be okay so I'll make sure that I tag all of that as well um, thank you so much my pleasure thank you so much I mean like honestly I like your I don't know your meditations are next level I'm excited already for oh. <laughs> April. Yeah, even if you went on Sunday that's going to be activating everybody's light body just the first Merkaba. Okay. And then on 444, we're going to do the nice that boom thing. I'm still creating it though. So we'll <laughs> see what comes up. I love so it. I think it's really important to do that at this time. So yeah. and make it accessible to everybody. Right. That's the thing. Right? Really important stuff. And if you feel drawn to it, then absolutely join us. It's an incredible community and we're creating like such beautiful spaces and, yeah. and you well, I see what you're doing to all your beautiful work. It's amazing. And so I'm truly happy to be aligned with you. Me too. To you. Yeah. So. so thank you. When I appreciate you over, too. we'll definitely do something. <laughs> we have to come up here and we'll go to the spa or we'll do something fun. And I don't know, we'll do yeah. something. Yeah. We'll do something. Get Justine around and then yeah. <laughs> we'll figure something out. Exactly. That would good. be amazing. Yeah. So thank you. Happy quarantining for the next, hopefully not that long, but whatever. I mean, like, there's actually the uh, the movie director. I forget his name. Paul something. Paul Fig, I think it is. He did the. Um, he's done so many movies. Uh, Bridesmaids and. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, what was the other one he did? The Spy with Melissa McCarthy. Yeah, yeah. So every five o'clock, he does uh, quarantinis. So he. <laughs> live cocktail hour so <laughs> i i mean people are just so inventive I, it's amazing some of the stuff we're seeing online so <laughs> it's true it's entertaining for sure it's good i, like it. <laughs> uh, I love it okay well thank mm -hmm. you miss charlotte i'm sending you lots of love from my thank you heart. so much <laughs> and, uh, we will it was great well I'm, i know i'll see you soon 
I'm yeah, gonna, in divine timing. <laughs> gonna like book a session with you or something. I think that's probably what's next in line for me. See where. No. <laughs> well, I would be honored. <laughs> All righty. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, you have an amazing rest of the day. <laughs> Bye. Bye.